going on, insiders? Brian Reese here, coming at you live from Austin, Texas. Very, very important topic today. High value training today. You're going to learn some things I promise you, you did not know before. And it's going to be epic. We got folks down in from all over the world. Again, Brian Reese, the VA Claims Insider, the most trusted name in education-based resources for veterans. And what are we talking about today? My top seven tips, okay? Top seven best ways to get a 100% VA disability rating. Of course, if you're eligible, right? And if you qualify, and if it's legal, moral, and ethical under the law, okay? Not everybody is gonna qualify for 100% VA disability rating. So I'm going to go run through a quick disclaimer here. I'll try to be fast. Um, I don't want to waste anybody's time. Uh, but I just want to be clear about who I am, who we are, so that you guys are armed with information, OK? I am not an accredited agent. I'm not a VSO. I'm not an attorney. We are not an entity associated with or affiliated with the Department of Veterans Affairs um, in any way, in any way, shape, or form. The video that we're going to run through today the information I'm sharing is for educational, informational purposes only. Please do not use it as a substitute for the medical advice from a doctor or a healthcare provider or the legal advice of a VA accredited attorney, okay? Quick results disclaimer. Here, I'll move myself out of the way. By watching today, by being here, you understand, guys and gals, that there are completely free services and resources out there to help veterans, okay? We support many of their organizations. Awesome, awesome VSO organizations. Uh, in fact, many of them are getting prepared to lobby on Capitol Hill uh, to the Senate VA committee. They have your best interests in mind, guys. They really do. And, and so we support the organizations. Uh, most of them are nonprofits, uh, but you can also use the paid services uh, of VA accredited agents or attorneys. Okay. Um, by watching this video, by using our website, you realize there are completely free services out there to assist and help veterans with VA disability claims for VA benefits, to help you with VA pension benefits, okay? Do not ever pay somebody to file a disability claim for you, okay? Number one, it's against the law uh, for somebody to be charging money to file their claim and represent you. They're not accredited. Um, and number two, you don't need to. Filing a disability claim is really easy, okay? Filing a VA disability claim with the exact medical evidence needed to prove service connection and show severity of symptoms, that's not so easy, okay? So that's what you should consider paying for, okay? Or you could also try to source your own doctors for free, okay? Utilization of this channel, my videos, our website at VA Claims Insider, or even our services is not required uh, to submit a claim for VA disability benefits, and you may achieve a positive VA disability outcome with these other free or paid organizations. You may see some testimonials out there. Um, those are real clients. Uh, many of, we haven't even asked them to post those. They just do because they wanna share their story. Okay, so those are real testimonials, um, but they were not paid. They're not paid by us for influence to share their stories. Um, we're not the VA guys. The reason we can't ever guarantee results is we're not the decision maker, okay? So you can prepare the perfect VA claim package Okay, yourself, you can have the right medical evidence, you're still probably going to get a compensation and pension exam for conditions, okay? And on top of the CNP exam, after those results are done, then an independent VA rater called an RVSR is actually going to make that decision, okay? VA Claims Insider does not control or make those decisions, which is why we can't and do not guarantee results, okay? Now, we're very good at what we do, a ton of our veterans do get results, okay, but we can't guarantee those results, okay? All right, I'm back. What the heck are we talking about today? The number one, I'm sharing the number one and number two best ways, along with my top seven best ways to get a 100 VA disability rating, okay? Now, this is the expert's guide. I'm sharing what I consider to be the most comprehensive resource uh, ever put together, okay? And you can do your own research um, because maybe you'll find something better. That's awesome. If you do, please let me know, okay? But I know your time is really valuable, and so I don't want to waste too much time. Again, if you're watching, though, live on Facebook, welcome to you. I'm going to be answering questions at the end, okay? So stay tuned. You can either ask your question right now in the chat function, okay? 
uh, and some team members hopefully can answer, some other vets who are on can mastermind with you. If you wanna hold your question till the end, that's awesome. I'm gonna try to answer as many as I can. If you're watching the recording on YouTube, welcome to you too. Please <clears throat> ask your comment. Hey, go down to the bottom of the video, scroll down, open up the description, keep scrolling down, there's free resources and links in there. And you can ask your question, we're gonna try to answer as many as we can, even if you're watching the recording, okay? All right, so many vets, <clears throat> excuse me, want, need, desire, and think that they deserve a 100% VA disability rating. I get it, right? A lot of vets um, think that they deserve to be rated at the 100% level. If you think you deserve it by law, I think you should go for it, okay? So um, maybe you're at 30 now, <clears throat> excuse me, my, uh, my allergies are acting up a little bit today. Maybe you're at 30 now, maybe you're at 70, maybe you're at 90, maybe you're thinking about filing for unemployability, um, but you're going for an increase because you're going, wait a minute, I'm, I'm missing out on 1500 bucks a month of tax-free benefits for me and my family, right? I mean, I, I get it. There's a lot on the line and a lot of benefits that are available to you at the 100% level that are not available to you if you're below 100%, okay? And we can talk about some of those benefits as well. We've got some other great resources and posts out there as well to help you, okay? Okay, so let's jump into this. <clears throat> Top seven best ways. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow vets, I don't care who tells you any other way. VA disability claims come down to medical evidence. I'm going to say that again. VA disability claims come down to medical evidence. Okay, I'm going to say it a third time. VA disability claims come down to medical evidence. You either have enough or you don't. Okay, so tip number one, I'm going to share a secret tip that almost nobody knows and almost nobody talks about of how you can get medical evidence for free and you could even do it right now while we're on this call, okay? Just say yes. How awesome does that sound? Okay, if you are in the VA disability system, odds are you have something called my healthy vet, okay? Some people call it my health vet. I call it my healthy vet, okay? You can Google my healthy vet. My healthy vet is the place where you can see lab results, you can see screening results, you can pull copies of your VA medical records, okay, your VA treatment records. Um, you can check appointments, right? Past, current, uh, uh, future appointments that are booked at the VA. You can order prescriptions, okay, or refills. Refill your prescriptions, that's where I refill all of mine. But a little known tip is you can use the secure messaging feature of my healthy vet to send secure HIPAA compliant messages to your primary care team at the VA, to your mental health care team at the VA, to specialists at the VA. And guess what? Every single time you send messages and they respond back, those notes and those inquiries flow directly into your VA treatment records. That's called medical evidence, guys and gals, okay? So if you need to get a particular condition documented, or if your symptoms are worse, and you just wanna reach out to somebody for help, right? Or, you know, hey man, hey, hey sir and ma'am, um, I haven't been into the VA mental health for four months, my prescriptions are getting low, I need refills of my whatever, right? Praises in, I need refills of my omeprazole, right? I need uh, my 150 milligram tablets uh, of venlafaxine, right? Or I need my Remeran refilled. Whatever medications you're taking, communicate those things with your doctors. And I actually think it's a good idea to let them know how you're doing, right? Tell them what's going on in your life. Tell them if you're in a ton of pain, tell them. If you're not sleeping well, tell them, right? If your mental health symptoms are getting progressively worse and they're acting up, tell them, okay? You can use that feature right on My Healthy Vet. It's super easy, you guys. You literally log into My Healthy Vet. 
Um, you can scroll to the top and it says secure messaging. Send a secure message to, uh, to your healthcare providers. You open it up and it's literally like sending little chat messages, okay? And uh, I recommend you do this because even if you don't go to the VA for treatment, you can be continually documenting your medical records, okay? So that's step number one. Now, why do I say that that's a, you know, somehow a tip to get you 100% VA rating? Guys, if you're already service connected for conditions, but you're underrated, chances are you haven't proven that your symptoms warrant the higher rating criteria under the law, okay? So one of the ways you do that is you start documenting how your symptoms are now worse. Okay, so that's step number one. I see the chat lighting up. People are like, oh my God, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> yeah, you totally can. Okay, so that's step number one. <clears throat> okay, tip number two. Go for high value VA disability claims. What does that mean? It's a made up term. Okay, we made it up. A high value VA disability claim is a disability with a high likelihood of being rated at 30% or on its own. Okay, 30% or higher on its own. Versus a low value claim are things that are rated less than that. Low value claims, guys, are typically things like hearing loss, tinnitus or tinnitus, the ringing in your ear, um, muscular skeletal conditions, pain issues. Those are usually zeros, tens, limitation range of motion if it's not very severe, 10%, right? If you've had surgery, maybe 20% with severe conditions, okay? But if you're trying to go for 100% VA rating and you believe you deserve that by law, right? If you're at 86% combined, right? Well, then that rounds up to 90, right? But if you're at 86% for seven conditions and you add an eighth condition that's rated at 10%, right? And then you add a ninth condition that's rated 10%, you're still gonna be at 90, right? Because you're battling the VA's fuzzy math, okay? So in many cases, the only way to get there mathematically is to layer in some high value VA disability claims. What are high value claims? Mental health conditions, okay? As of right now, 2020, there's 31 rateable mental health conditions under the law. They can be filed primary, they can be filed secondary, okay? You can file for increases on those claims if you're already service connected but underrated. Secondary chronic pain syndrome, right? Secondary somatic symptom disorder is a high value claim. Migraines and headaches, very commonly rated at 30% or higher. Sleep apnea, very commonly rated at 50%. IBS, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, that can be rated up to 60%. In fact, I just wrote a post uh, on that. It's called GERD VA Rating Explained, the expert's guide. Okay, so if you go to VA Claims Insider slash blog, You'll see it where I, I break down GERD, right? Acid reflux, regurgitation. If you've got major issues with that and it's affecting your work, your life, your social functioning, you should consider going for an IBS or a GERD or a migraines or a mental health claim, okay? And don't forget also to go secondary. We're gonna talk about that in tip number four, okay? But the bottom line is if you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and you're trying to go for 100 and you're not going to go for individual unemployability, right, TDIU, um, you got to layer in some high-value claims or you're not going to get there mathematically. Okay, so go for the high-value claims. Again, we've got so many resources out there. You need some help, okay? If you need more medical evidence, remember I just told you guys, the number one reason why VA disability claims get denied, not enough medical evidence. The number two reason, you're unable to prove service connection, right? That nexus <clears throat> on an at least as likely or not basis. So you probably need more medical evidence in the form of disability benefit questionnaires, okay? In the form of medical nexus letters, that's what we help you do inside of our membership programs, okay? Now you'll see a link across the bottom, vaclaimsinsiderelite.com. It's a free three-step intake to get started today. Okay, you'll hear from us within about 96 hours. We can connect you with vetted independent medical providers in our referral network who can do just that. Disability exams, okay? Documentation of disability benefit questionnaires for a wide range of conditions. They can also write and provide competent and credible medical nexus letters, 
for a wide range of conditions, okay? To overcome the two reasons why you're sitting there banging your head against the wall. That's why I started this company, you guys. I started this company because I realized the problems. Veterans need more medical evidence, okay? That's what we do. You're also gonna get access to over $13,000 worth of our high value education based resources, which by the way, I'm almost prepared to launch a new one, which is talking about, I think there's 47 that we've been able to prove, 47 sleep apnea secondary conditions with case law, with medical research, I'm giving that to you, right? I could probably sell that for a thousand bucks, but it's included when you're a member of VA Claims Insider Elite, okay? Um, I also have a high value resource that we just created called the 31 symptoms of mental health conditions broken down and explained. This, it, nothing like that exists, you guys. We created that for you, it's for our members, okay? Again, how do you get it? www.vaclaimsinsiderelite.com. Again, you'll see my ugly mug on the first page uh, and just start, it's a free three-step intake. Don't forget to sign the membership agreement in step two and we'll be in touch. Okay, again, that's me welcoming you in today um, to take advantage of our resources. Um, that's what we do, guys. That's why we exist. Okay, so we've gone through two of seven. Let's go to tip number three. Have a doctor complete DBQs, disability benefit questionnaires, for conditions that are already service connected. It's amazing to me how many veterans don't know this, how many attorneys don't know this. How many accredited agents in VSOs don't know this? If you're already service connected, guys, for a condition, but it's underrated, the only thing you need for simple increases is medical documentation that prove that your symptoms are worse. And in our opinion, the best way to do that is with DBQs. Okay, there's more than 70 of them. Okay, you can Google. Uh, VA DBQs list when we're done. There's more than 70 conditions. It's broken out and broken down by body parts. If you can get a doctor to complete a DBQ for you with all the symptoms checked, the ICD code, they wet sign, it makes sense, right? You can file for an increase inside of VA.gov or eBenefits. So you can do this yourself or, or work with an accredited agent. And you do that simple increase and you've got a DBQ that shows, wait a minute, you now meet the higher rating criteria under the law. We have seen many instances where that simple increase is going to be granted without a compensation and pension exam. Why? Because you've provided enough new and relevant medical evidence so the VA rater can make a decision on the spot. Okay? It's called a decision ready claim. They can get it and go boom, right? It's ready to go. Um, now, we can't guarantee that because chances are you're going to get a CNP exam. But having that DBQ in there is so important, right? It's so important, especially if you get a crap CNP exam, okay? So if you can't get your doctors to do a DBQ, that's what we do, right? We can connect you with doctors in our referral network. They offer discounted rates for DBQs. Um, I challenge anybody to find a lower price on DBQs, right? Good luck. Um, if you can, let me know, right? But our doctors, in my opinion, are amazing. They're unbelievable. Many of them are fellow disabled vets. They're trained medically. They provide competent, incredible DBQs and nexus letters, okay? And for some of these guys, like let's say you're service-connected migraine, migraines for 0%. That's a pretty simple increase to 30 as long as you meet that next higher criteria, right? As long as you can show that your symptoms are worse. Same with sleep apnea. There's a lot of vets that have OSA rated at zero. If you've got a CPAP now, continuous positive airway pressure machine, get a DBQ completed for sleep apnea. Make sure the doctor fills it out correctly. You file for an increase, that's 50%, right? You're not worried about the nexus because you're already service connected, okay? So at that point, all you need is medical evidence to prove that your symptoms are worse, okay? We call that severity of symptoms, okay? So that's tip number three. Tip number four, secondary service connection. Again, it's amazing to me 
how many folks don't know that they're eligible for secondary VA disability claims under the law. Did you know that you're eligible for secondary claims secondary to another claim, right? You could go secondary to a secondary to a secondary to a secondary connected to a primary, okay? It can go all the way. So let me give you an example. I'm just gonna try to think of one off the cuff here. Let's say, your service connected for um, bilateral plantar fasciitis, right? Which is severe heel pain, you're rated at 0%, okay? Bilateral, uh, let's, you know what, let's call it um, 30%, okay? Maybe your knees are now shot because of your plantar fasciitis, right? You've had to change how you walk and it's affected your knees. You could then file for knee strain, okay, or knee joint osteoarthritis, secondary to your plantar fasciitis. Once that's connected, you could also then connect and go, wait a minute, my knees have caused my back to go, right? Now I got a lumbar issue. Now you could go lumbar, secondary to the knees, which the knees are secondary to the feet, to the plantar fasciitis, okay? Now maybe because your back's got a problem, you got a cervical strain, you got an issue with your neck, right? So now you could go cervical strain, neck, secondary to your back. Your back is secondary to your knees, your knees are secondary to your feet. Guess what? Very well proven and documented medically that your neck and issues in the spine can affect your brain. They can affect headaches, migraines. So you might have migraines secondary to cervical strain. The cervical strain is secondary to your back. Your back is secondary to your knees. Your knees are secondary to your feet, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. I just made that up on the go. So hopefully that worked. Uh, but that's an example of secondary service connection, okay? If you're filing for primary service connection, you're telling the VA that this particular disease condition, disability was directly caused or made worse by your military service. Now, if you've been out of the service for a while and you've got no documentation in your service treatment records, you've got no diagnosis of the condition, you've got no symptoms documented, there's no subjective complaints, okay? If it's been 10, 15, 20 years, guys and gals, if you file that for direct service connection, I can virtually guarantee you that claim is gonna come back denied. And it's gonna say not service connected, okay? Versus, wait a minute, maybe that condition developed years after you left the service, but maybe that condition is due to something else in your body, okay? We know medically, guys and gals, that when stuff breaks down in our body, it affects other parts of your body, okay? So don't forget about secondary service connection, which is eligible, eligible for a rating compensation under the law, just like any primary condition, okay? Now, the big secret with secondary service connection is you have to be able to provide medical nexus evidence establishing a connection between the two conditions. This is where a lot of veterans fail, in our opinion, is they'll go, hey, I've got uh, a lumbar, I got a back problem, and that back issue is due to my service-connected ankle problems, right? That's, it's caused aggravation, it's made it worse. And they go and do this, and they write a personal statement, they say my back is secondary to my feet or my ankle, and may, they may or may not get uh, a compensation and pension exam, but it comes back denied. And the reason it's going to get denied is because there's three requirements under the law for secondary service connection. Okay, do you guys know what those are? I see some head nods. No, I'm just kidding. I can't see any head nods. <laughs> so the first thing is you have to have a diagnosis of the condition you're trying to connect. Okay, so let's say you're already service connected for PTSD you think that your obstructive sleep apnea was caused or made worse or aggravated by your service-connected PTSD. You must have already gone through a sleep study for OSA, obstructive sleep apnea, and you have to have a diagnosis, 
of sleep apnea. Okay, that's requirement number one. Number two, there's got to be evidence of a current primary disability that's already directly service connected. Well, duh, you already have that. That's the PTSD. It's already documented in VA.gov and eBenefits. Good to go. But there's a third requirement. And again, this is where a lot of vets miss it. By law, it actually states you must provide medical nexus evidence establishing a connection between the current disability that's already service connected, okay, and whatever disability you're trying to connect it to, which in this case would be the sleep apnea and the PTSD. Okay, get a medical nexus letter. Okay, if you can't get one from your own doctors, if the VA doctors won't help, that's what we do inside of our VA Claims Insider Elite program, guys. Okay, again, you see the link across the bottom of the screen there. Hopefully, some of my vets uh, and team members inside the chat will post it as well. You can get started today, right now, for free. www.vaclaimsinsiderelite.com. Dot com. Again, it's a free three-step intake. You can claim over $13,000 worth of high-value VA claim educational resources. How do I know that? Because I made most of them, okay? And it took forever. <laughs> and, and we're constantly adding things, okay? Just like I told you, the, the sleep apnea secondary condition secret guide. Nothing like that exists anywhere. Not with that much detail and documentation. The 31 secret mental health symptoms. How do you document them? How do you explain how your individual symptoms of mental health are limiting or affecting your life? Do you know how to talk about suicidal ideation? Do you know how to talk about obsessive rituals, which interfere with your work, your life, your social functioning, right? Do you know those things? <laughs> well, guess what? If not, I break it down step by step so it makes sense. And I use actual examples from real veterans so that it'll click and you'll go, oh my God, like I, I'm dealing with that. I'm suffering from anger issues. I am in near continuous panic attack. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's not a panic attack. It's just severe anxiety, which I explain the difference, right? Anxiety and panic attacks are not the same. Okay, and I break those down and I explain to you how you talk about your symptoms. Why is that so important? It's so important because your symptoms are what affect your VA rating under the law. And if you're not prepared to tell your true story and you're not prepared to be uncomfortably vulnerable, you're either gonna get denied or you're gonna get lowballed. okay? Now, I wanna be, make something very clear. I am not, advocating or telling you to lie or stretch the truth. That is illegal under federal law. Okay, it's, uh, it's a criminal penalty, criminal violation under federal law and the False Claims Act, okay? Do not do that, okay? Now, in our experience, it's not that veterans are trying to lie or stretch the truth. It's that they simply either don't want to talk about it, what they've got going on or they don't know how to talk about it, okay? One thing vets are very good at, I know that because I am you, right? You are me and I am you. We love to just suck it up and carry on and act like we're fine, right? Even though we're not. Veterans are proud people. We do not like to show and be vulnerable. We don't like to share ugly things, right? I understand that. But let me tell you something. This is your time to not hold back. You have to tell all. Okay, so DBQs, we talked about secondary service connection. Tip number five, tip number five, seven, hang with me and then I'll get to some questions. Obtain a buddy letter <clears throat> from a firsthand witness. A buddy letter is nothing more than a competent, <clears throat> incredible statement from a firsthand witness. It could be somebody you served with overseas, it could be somebody you were uh, um, at a training event with here at home station, it could be a spouse could be a child, adult child over 18, right? Could be your pastor, could be a coworker, could be a boss, okay? Anybody who can shed some light on what's going on in your life regarding that condition, right? And by the way, if you Google VA buddy letter example, guess who shows up? 
you're going to see my ugly mug again there, but I actually share a real example of a VA buddy letter for mental health. So you can get an idea of how you go about having a spouse write a statement about what's going on and how severe your mental health symptoms are and how they're living or affecting your life and how they've hurt your relationship and cause sexual dysfunction and cause work issues. Okay. So important. Okay. Buddy letters are referred to and called lay evidence under the law. Lay evidence simply means after the fact evidence. Okay. It needs to be competent. It needs to be credible. Okay. Why do I say firsthand witness? Well, third hand hearsay ain't going to be very credible. Right. If you get a buddy letter from somebody who wasn't there or somebody who heard about the incident, right? That's not gonna be very credible. So the weight of that evidence is not gonna hold very much weight in front of the VA Raiders' eyes, okay? So that's why we talk about firsthand witnesses. Buddy letters are especially important if you're lacking medical evidence at all, if your service treatments uh, records are silent, or if you've never reported something. All right, maybe it's a, an MST situation, military sexual assault, military sexual harassment, military sexual trauma, right? Well, a lot of times that stuff is never reported, right? Fear of reprisal, all, all kinds of stuff, right? And so, you know, those incidents go undocumented and then the VA denies the claim, says there's no evidence. Of course, there isn't any freaking evidence because you didn't report it. Get a buddy letter. Right. You write a personal statement too, but get a buddy letter. Okay, that's tip number five. Two more, hang with me. The number one most important day in the entire process, bar none, end all be all, the compensation and pension exam. If you get one, go. Okay, that's our advice. And you better be prepared. You better be prepared. It's the number one most important day in the entire process. Why do I say that? Again, I don't, we always tell you real truth, guys. We tell you ground truth about what's going on. Very rarely, if ever, do I see a VA Raider side with evidence that is contrary to the evidence provided by the CNP examiner. Now, I think it's total freaking garbage. I think that entire system needs to be gutted and overhauled, okay? which we're working on. <laughs> um, but the sad reality is these compensation pension examiners, many of them are freaking garbage, right? They are conducting illegal, immoral, and unethical exams. They are denying veterans benefits that they deserve by law. Sometimes they just don't even know. They don't even understand what they're doing, what they're completing. Okay, that's, that's a sad reality. Um, they don't conduct an adequate exam. They don't use a goniometer. They don't ask about pain. They're contentious. They don't like you. They don't like veterans. They don't like the disability system. They think you're lying. They think you're stretching, whatever the situation is, right? Which is just ugly. It's ugly. Um, but it happens. Okay, but the bottom line is you got to be prepared to win. Now, what does that mean? That means you need to go in there and tell your true story cold. You need to tell all, do not hold anything back, okay? And this is also why we, we believe DBQs and Nexus letters are so important, okay? Because you basically get to dry run your CNP exam. Why do I say that? Do you know that at your CNP exam, the condition in question, the doctor conducting that CNP exam is completing an electronic version of the disability benefit questionnaire for that condition. It's the same exact thing, okay? And they're also asked to provide a nexus. The scary thing, most CNP examiners don't even know what that means. They're checking boxes on the electronic DBQ for that condition and they don't even know what it means. It, it's, it's crazy, right? But, but this is reality. This is ground truth, okay? So, you know, you may get something back that, well, the CMP examiner said that it was less likely, right? Which means there's a less than 50% chance 
that it was due to your service or due to another disability, that they maybe checked it by accident. They maybe didn't even know what it means. They maybe are not actually trained to conduct a CNP exam for that condition, right? Maybe it, it required a specialist. So, man, we just, we see so many garbage CNP examiners, but I, I don't want to scare you because there's some great ones out there too um, who care deeply about veterans who actually do take the time to read your records prior to the exam. Okay. So they know what's in your medical records. They understand what's at issue. They do know how to fill out an electronic DBQ. They do understand nexus statements, but most of them don't. Okay. So you got to be prepared. You need to go through all your evidence. Okay. Go through your service treatment records. Go through an updated copy of, of your VA records, right? Go on to my healthy vet, log in, go to blue button, right? Pull a blue button report and download a PDF of your current records and go through it. Take a look at what it says, right? Because you need to know. If you're getting private uh, treatment from an outside provider, make sure you get copies of those records, okay? Because you need to know what's in them. Go through any buddy letters, go through any statements you wrote, go through the law, go through CFR 38, right? Part four, schedule for rating disabilities. That's the law that governs all disabilities. It governs the name, it governs the symptoms required, talks about range of motion, talks about pain, mental health conditions are defined, the symptoms are listed. Go through that so you know when you show up to your compensation and pension exam, you're ready, man, you're ready, okay? And you're ready to punch back if you happen to get a terrible CNP exam, okay? So that's tip number six. All right, the seventh way that you can get a 100% VA disability rate, uh, uh, rating is by going for something called total disability individual unemployability. Okay, I'm gonna say that again, VATDIU, stands for total disability, individual unemployability. Okay, now it's most commonly just called IU, individual unemployability, okay? And what that means is maybe you don't actually qualify for the 100% scheduler rating, okay? But you're still eligible to be paid at the 100% rate if one or more service-connected disabilities prevent you from maintaining substantially gainful employment. Okay, and I'm gonna run through this requirement real quick because it seems confusing, but it's really not. Okay, do you qualify for VA TDIU? Two main requirements, and then I'm gonna to go to the one-off, okay? Number one, okay, and you have to have both of these. This is an and, not an or. Okay, it's an and statement, not an or. You must already have one or more service-connected disabilities that's rated at 60% or higher, okay? Or you have two or more service-connected disabilities with one rated at 40% or higher and a combined rating of 70% or more. And <laughs> don't forget about the and. You can't hold down a steady job that supports your family financially. Okay, it's defined as substantially gainful employment. Okay, odd jobs, things like marginal employment, don't count. Okay, substantially gainful employment. Okay, now what you might want to do is you can Google VA TDIU requirements. Right, go go read exactly what it says from VA.gov. Right, we've also got a post out there. Now, did you also know that you can still qualify for TDIU even if you don't meet those two? Right, now you're kind of scratching your head going, what, I thought you just said you had to meet those. You do, however, there are certain situations, maybe you have to be hospitalized, okay, where you qualify for the 100% rating even though you don't meet the quote unquote VA TDIU requirements. Let me give you an example, okay? We had a Vietnam veteran who had a 10% disabling condition for heart disease. Now, it should have been rated at 100%, but it wasn't. That's a whole nother story. 
but the guy had been in and out of the hospital for a long time and had major, major issues going on, okay? He could not hold substantial gainful employment because of the severity of his heart condition, okay? So what he did is he filed for TDIU and he showed hospital reports, he showed how much treatment and therapy he's been in over time, had all kinds of issues, lab reports, um, major, major issues, okay? He was approved. He was approved for TDIU, okay? So it is possible. Okay, those are my top seven tips. We're about 45 minutes in. Again, seven, those are my top seven best ways to get 100% VA disability if you qualify. Okay, again, you guys need some help. You're trying to get to 100. You believe you deserve it by law. It's legal, moral, ethical, but you need more medical evidence. You need DBQs, you need nexus letters, you want to resources. You can get started for free today at VA Claims Insider Elite.com. And thank you, by the way, my team. Man, so many of you, <clears throat> again, you know, as I'm doing these, it's, it can sometimes be super distracting if I'm teaching a topic to be trying to answer questions at the same time. So thank you to my team uh, who's answering a bunch of questions here. Um, can someone link the chart for migraines? I got a great post out there. Uh, Quadri. If you're looking for a post on migraines, go to Google and type VA rating for migraines. I think we're like link number six. Um, I wrote like a 3,200 word post on migraines. It's freaking epic. You're going to love it. Uh, let's see. Go on to VA.gov. Trying to be <laughs> rusty. I'm trying to be a sponge and soak up all the knowledge I can. BACI rocks with that knowledge. Thanks, man. Um, come by Craig's answering a bunch of stuff. You to man, thank you to my other team members who are in here. Lonnie, if I had an EMG done by my neurologist, okay, will the VA order another exam during the CNP? It's hard to say. Um, some of them do, some of them don't, right? And it's really up to the examining physician, Lonnie, if they're going to order more or not. Okay. Paul, I'm currently rated totally at 90% or total at 90 with two at 40, one at 30, one at 20. Can I apply for TDIU even though I, I have a claim pending? I would wait until the pending claim is resolved, okay? Because if you open up an IU claim in the middle, that's a new claim you're opening, Paul, and they're going to end up combining them. Well, TDIU has got a pretty substantial questionnaire tied to it and it's probably going to delay the results of your first one so again i'm not an accredited agent i'm not a lawyer it's just my opinion i would wait <clears throat> until the claim is adjudicated and if you don't get to 100 and you still you deserve i think you believe you deserve it you could go back at it at that time that's what i would do roy hello from tejas texas One year Okay, Wally wrote, the intent to file VA guidelines state you have one year from the intent to file date to submit a formal claim for an increase, right, or a formal claim. If I have submitted all my DBQs and medical documents with the CMP exams and I'm not completed, does that mean my claim will be deleted because I've already reached my intent to file date. Ab no, absolutely not, right? So Wally, it's, it's a save the date. You have 12 months from the time you open your intent to file, okay, whether you do that yourself on eBenefits or VA.gov or you do that with, uh, with an accredited rep, you then have 12 months to actually get the claim submitted, okay? That does not include the time it takes to schedule a CMP exam, the time it takes for the VA to adjudicate the claim and issue a rating decision, right? So as long as you got the claim submitted within 12 months, you're okay, okay? Uh, Patrick says, thank you, Brian. You're very welcome, sir. Um, 
Ryan, you throwing any hatchets tomorrow at Stumpy's? I don't know. We'll have to see, man. Are you going, Mickey? Hope to see you there. Thanks, Combat Craig, for posting the migraines guide. Um, I have, okay, Nick wrote, I have 0%. Uh, hang on, I just missed it. Here we go. I have 0% for IBS. Okay, IBS stands for irritable bowel syndrome, by the way. Uh, can GERD be secondary? Absolutely. Man, GERD and IBS are like connected both ways. IBS secondary to GERD, GERD secondary to IBS, especially if you're taking any kinds of medications. Um, so absolutely, Nick, take a look at that. Good morning, Leo from San Antonio. Joey says, I have 11 DBQs that would need to be done. So let me talk about that. I would never recommend a veteran get 11 DBQs done, okay? It's not worth it, Joey. So again, these are my opinions. So remember, we talked about um, high value claims, okay? I highly doubt that 11 DBQs are all high value claims. What I would do instead is I would focus on making sure your strategy is right. Maybe there's a chronic pain claim in there. Maybe there's a mental health secondary or mental health increase. Maybe you've got sleep apnea, migraines, IBS, GERD, plantar fasciitis, back issue, right? Whatever. Maybe there's heart stuff going on, asthma, lung. Focus on those, but I wouldn't recommend paying for 11 DBQs. I think you're just, I think you're spending money that's unnecessary. Um, and remember, if you do get a CNP exam, the CNP examiner is going to be completing them anyway. Okay. So what I would do instead, Joey, is probably look at doing two, maybe three DBQs at most. Okay. Um, I was just diagnosed. What's up, Joseph? I was just diagnosed with OSA. Okay. Obstructive sleep apnea and need a CPAP. Should OSA be filed as a secondary to SSD and a nasal blockage if you have both of those already? Um, so nasal issues, right? Uh, very, very, very commonly linked uh, for sure on the proximately due to or the result of, okay? Aggravation of obstructive sleep apnea. If you've got nasal issues, you've had surgery, major issues with, um, allergies, you've got chronic sinusitis or rhinitis, right? Allergic rhinitis, very common for obstructive sleep apnea to be aggravated by those conditions. So I would look at going secondary to those um, if it were me. But again, you're going to need a medical nexus letter. You need a medical, you need medical ne nexus evidence to connect the OSA, okay, with the nasal issues, okay? Let's see, Brian. Brian, can I add supporting documents after submitting my claim before my CNP? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, here's a strategy, right? Let's say you're you're bouncing up on your notice of intent to file date, and you don't want to risk it. File the claim, and then hurry up and upload stuff. Right? You can always upload evidence after claim submission. Okay. You can technically upload new evidence right up until claim decision. Now, we recommend you don't do that because it's going to slow the claim down because they're going to have to go, VA is going to have to go back and adjudicate it, look at the evidence. Um, heaven forbid there's conflicting information, okay? But absolutely, right? If it's 7 to 14 to 21 days within submission, go ahead and upload it. Absolutely. If you've got new evidence, that could make a difference. Does it make a difference if an examiner uses an initial PTSD DBQ versus an increased PTSD? If so, should I point that out during my HLR call? Yeah, Kevin, we've, we've heard of some garbage CNP examiners and raters who have denied mental health claims because they're claiming that the private examiner filled the information out on the wrong DBQ. Who gives a crap, number one? Medical evidence is medical evidence. Number two, the initial DBQ, okay, for PTSD initial, first time filer, you've never had PTSD diagnosed or service connected. The CNP examiner will complete the electronic version of the DBQ for PTSD initial. 
Only they can do it. Private doctors, private psychologists, psychiatrists, PAs, nurse practitioners, they cannot do a DBQ for PTSD initial. Okay, so it's total crap. Uh, I can tell you, brother, that you got a terrible CNP examiner who was going to deny you anyway. Um, and the VA raider was probably looking for ways to deny it as well. I would. I'd call it out, man, in HR and be like, this is crap. This is new and relevant medical evidence, not previously considered, and they're going to deny it because it's on the wrong form? That's not legal. Medical evidence is medical evidence. Okay, again, that's my opinion. That's not legal advice. Uh, I thought I read that they give you a combined rating for GERD and IBS. Nope. Those are separate rateable conditions under the law. Um, GERD and IBS are completely different. IBS is uh, typically a, an issue, irritable bowel syndrome, right? So diarrhea, major issues there. Um, whereas GERD is an esophageal condition, typically severe acid reflux. So the two can be connected. The two are related, but they're rated separately under 38 CFR part four, the schedule, okay? Ryan, I'm driving to Dallas. I'm driving from Dallas with my son just to see you tomorrow. God bless America. That's awesome, man. Super awesome. I'm excited to see you, Mickey. That means a lot, man. Um, what is the best secondary for sleep apnea instead of PTSD? It's hard to say, Jim, that there's a best one um, simply because it all comes down to your specific case and situation, your medical evidence. Uh, ones that are commonly granted though, and linked, right? There's a medical link between the two conditions, OSA, um, definitely sinusitis and allergic rhinitis, anything to do with nose, nasal, tonsil issues. Um, that's a very good one to try to connect OSA to very good too, actually. Sinusitis is separate from allergic rhinitis. Um, if you can connect it to mental health through weight gain, that's a good one. Um, the truth is, Jim, you can connect obstructive sleep apnea to almost anything if you've gained weight, right? If you can prove how a service-connected disability that you're suffering from caused you to gain weight, okay? Because the most logical, proven, correlated cause and effect for obstructive sleep apnea is obesity, weight gain, okay? And unfortunately, some of these garbage CNP examiners, especially these terrible VA CNP examiners, are claiming things in their denials like it's less likely due to, right? Veterans overweight, veterans obese. Of course they are because of their service-connected disability, because of the side effects of their medication. Okay, so that's something to think about, okay? Okay, man, you guys are crazy. There's just so many questions here that <laughs> there's over 200 of you still on, by the way. Um, I'm gonna try to answer as many as I can, again, throughout the rest of this video on Facebook. And then again, if you're watching the recording on YouTube, open it up in the description, answer, uh, ask your question. We'll try to answer as many of them as we can, okay? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Can I have my... What do I do when the VA tells me in the letter that my medical records cannot be found? I was turned down on one of my claims. Okay, John, the burden of proof is always on you as the veteran to provide enough medical evidence. If they don't have something documented and the VA can't find it, unfortunately, that's on you to go get it. Yes, the VA has a duty to assist. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. They're busy people. Um, you need to provide that medical evidence. So it doesn't just have to be service treatment records, right? It could be VA records. Get them, upload them. Could be private records, get them, upload them. Could be a new DBQ, could be a new Nexus letter, right? Could be you write a sworn declaration. Hey, here's the deal with my service treatment records. I've tried to find them for years. They burned in a fire, they're lost. However, 
I'm providing a sworn declaration with my testimony where I'm declaring under penalty of perjury that the foregoing is true and correct. I'm also submitting buddy statements from firsthand witnesses. I'm also submitting news articles. I'm also submitting my journal I wrote from Vietnam, right, or whatever the situation is. You can always, always, always try with either new medical evidence, new and relevant evidence that they didn't have, and or sworn declarations and buddy statements. Okay? You guys are awesome. Love you. Again, you guys need some help? That's what we do at VA Claims Insider. We have over 200 team members. Um, what a blessing. What a blessing, fellow vets. I mean, I'm absolutely incredible team supporting VA Claims Insider, the movement. Um, and we do it for you. We do it for you, okay, to help you get the rating and compensation you deserve, okay? Again, you need some help. You need more medical evidence. You want access to our educational programs. You see it right there across the screen. You can go to vaclaimsinsiderelite.com. Okay, again, you need some help. It's a free three-step intake. www.vaclaimsinsiderelite.com. All right, guys. Brian Reese here, VA Claims Insider. Out from Austin, Texas, I hope you enjoyed today's top seven best ways to get a 100% VA disability rating. We'll talk to you real soon. See you guys.